Welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes with DailyStraits.com. Today we have a very special guest with us, Sydney-based Carol Isa, who is the founder of Elephpreneur, where she works with local and global businesses and global business owners and their teams to help them go from good to great. As a consultant, her specialty, her specialty lies in coaching executives and their teams in large enterprises, SMEs, and startups. Besides running her own business, Beirut Born Carol is also a public speaker and the host of the Leadership Activators podcast. In the past, she has been invited to present talks both domestically and internationally to share her experience in leadership, emotional intelligence, and entrepreneurship. So today we're going to talk to uh, Carol on how she got her training business from the ground up. Hello, Carol. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, June. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Awesome. So let's dive right into the questions. So um, like I said earlier, you were born in Beirut, but now you're in Australia. So what prompted the move? Wow, a lot of things. Um, I would say in a nutshell, mainly is that I've always been an explorer and love to explore different cultures and different countries. And I was very curious about other people. And uh, very early on in my journey and in my career, I had the opportunity to fly to London, to Paris, to San Francisco as part of my role. And then further down the line, I was like, you know what? I actually want to experience even more what it feels like to live overseas. And um, I chose Australia because it's a beautiful melting pot of different cultures. I love the weather as well. And I had the beautiful opportunity to also meet Australians as part of my first bed and breakfast business uh, back in the, the days. So um, I decided to give it a go and here I am. Awesome. So what sort of challenges did you face um, in the move? Yeah, a lot of challenges. I would say the biggest one was to really realize that it's going to be a big adventure. And there was a little bit of fear as well involved because everything was new. I had like I didn't know anyone when I was going there at the time. I remember landing with my suitcase and that was it. And I, I felt like I was just. And, you know, like when I was in Lebanon, a lot of people used to know me already. My phone used to ring all the time. I think it was this challenge of rebuilding myself, finding what I truly was about and creating a new network of people from scratch. That was the biggest challenge uh, because having no family members, no friends, no close network. Um, this is something that was very challenging, especially that at the time I was um, very good at what I did as a technician. So I used to be a sound engineer but I didn't have people skills. And I think this is where I noticed the biggest gap that I had when I first landed in Australia, people skills. Okay, so you came alone to Australia? Yes, yes, oh, yes. What year was that? 2012. Wow, so okay. And um, you have since, um, you know, um, made this a home you've married and then you had a child and then you know now you have a business so um i noticed that you were working with people and then in the end you decided to branch out to your own business which is Aleppreneur. is that right correct yes yeah that's and right. uh i was just wondering the the shift why the shift that was a I would say it, there were a lot of connecting dots looking back of what drove the shift. It looked like a sudden decision or an overnight decision at the time. But in fact, when I look back, I think that things started to sit nicely um, and it was about to happen anyway. So what I mean by this is that since I started early on in my career, I always found myself in having those opportunities where people would ring me, they would be running a business and be like, hey, Carol, we, we have this problem in the business and we're looking for someone to help us develop this thing that we've never done before. And would you be able to help us? I heard that you did this and that and you could possibly create a solution for us. And then I would say yes and try to figure it out. So it was most of the time I was put in this position where there was a challenge that no one was able to overcome and they were looking for someone to create an idea on how that we can solve it and drive it. So 
at the time I had no idea that it was entrepreneurship or th this, this, uh, this concept. I didn't know it was there. And um, by the age of 25, I was appointed to be the studio manager of a recording studio. Be being a sound engineer first, then I was asked to manage the recording studio. And a few months later, starting a training center for sound engineers. A few months later, starting my own bed and breakfast. So I think I always had this, I used to lean towards that idea of driving pro projects and having missions and visions to be on. And um, pretty much when I moved to Australia, I got exposed to the world of entrepreneurship. I studied digital product management, uh, started to look into e-learning and uh, seeing how is it that we could uh, transform the face-to-face -face experience into an online environment and had the opportunity to work with beautiful and amazing businesses here in Sydney. And very quickly, a lot of people started to get in touch with me, asking me to help them, to coach them, to train them. Uh, for asking for my advice and I was like hang on a minute how about I start to my own business uh, around education and how is it that we can make the most out of it online and offline using the people skills that I have learned over time so uh, this is what got me to start my own business so it's five years right the company yes I would uh, 2015 yeah, that would be six, six already. Six, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, how did you get your business name? It's really interesting. It's a combination of Aleph, like, um, and preneur, entrepreneur. So what was the, like, the story behind that? Yeah, wow, that's a great question. And not a lot of people ask about this. <laughs> Thank you so much for the question. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's one that go, goes back to 4,000 years ago. And it's about the Phoenicians who are a very early form of entrepreneurship. It's a civilization that used to be across the Mediterranean Sea. And they are the one behind the very first alphabet that has been created that we're using today. And uh, Aleph is the first letter of the Phoenician alphabet. And by all means, they were a civilization that was very entrepreneurial. And they used to live in very small cities. And most of them were in Lebanon, which is known today as being Lebanon. At, at the time, it was not Lebanon. And um, they're like, OK, we have small cities, but we have great intel and a lot of technologies. How about we look at the sea beyond what's out there, like beyond the sea, and connect with other cultures and civilizations, see what their needs are, and develop solutions for them. And for us to be able to trade goods and transfer the goods to their cities, how about we become really good sailors and build strong and sturdy ships to move the goods around? And this is what created the civilization and got the civilization to be so successful, which is a very early form of entrepreneurship because I'm guessing that they needed to be very emotionally intelligent, very entrepreneurial in looking at opportunities and matching the needs of other civilizations with what they already had that they could offer. So the word Aleph is really a tribute to this uh, civilization who created this alphabet to communicate as well. And Aleph stands for the ox or oh. the bull. If you look at the letter A, um, at the moment, the way we use it, it's flipped. So it's this way, but it mm -hmm. used to be that way. So if you look at the symbol of um, Aleph, preneur, it is how it used to be written before. And it's actually the horns of the bull and the head of the bull. This is what it represents in Phoenician language. So it's this powerful energy that you will need as an entrepreneur to come up with the idea, being clear on your vision and driving it forward so that you can start attracting like-minded people to work with them and through them to create that change that you, you are looking to create. And preneur is entrepreneur, right? The mix. The end yes, preneur, Aleph, preneur. It's a type of entrepreneurship. So, uh, so yeah, it's about working with others to drive the mission forward. Okay, very nice name. And I presume you are a historian. Uh, what's your background like? Because no, you look not. like you, <laughs> like you well read, or uh, do you like um, civilization or entrepreneurship? What What is your background? What is your university um, background? Initially, I, I used to be a sound engineer, so I graduated in filmmaking. So um, I was supposed to movie that I was supposed to be a movie director initially, 
And let me tell you, um, one of the classes that I used to find that was so boring, whether it was at uni or at school, was history. Like, literally, I was like, oh, my God, here comes the history class. <laughs> but for some reason, I'm not a historian, uh, not something that I'm very um, passionate about. Let's put it this way. But for some reason, when the teacher uh, shared with us the story of the Phoenicians at the time, I was all ears and I leaned into it. And for, for some reason, I was very interested. And I think because it had this entrepreneurial kick to it. And it was a very early stage in my journey where I think I connected with the way they were operating and I liked it. So yeah, initially I come from a filmmaking sound engineering background. Wow, incredible. All right, so, okay, Alice Pruner, right? What does it uh, do? What kind of services does it provide? Beautiful. Yes. So we, we do leadership and communication training for what I call the silent movers and shakers. And usually people tend to think about people as introverts or extroverts. For us, it's silent mover and shakers who are really good at what they do. So they're really good at the hard skills and they pride themselves to be that. The problem is that they don't necessarily have access to the right tools to develop their people's skills. So I come across a lot of business owners and managers who feel frustrated because they get to the point where they need to manage other people because they're good at what they do, but they don't have, they haven't developed the skill set to have the confidence they need to influence people around them and create an impact or driving the results that need to be driven. And it doesn't come naturally to them. So what I do, I give them access to those tools and in other words, the manual on how to unlock the potential of themselves and the people that are with them on the mission in the team, which is why we do leadership and we focus a lot on the leadership and communication training section. Okay, so it's like a program, right? They, they co you coach them for X number of weeks or is it forever? Yeah, that, this is correct. So depending on who the person is and what type of challenges they're going through. So we have team training. So it could be half day or a full day training, depending on what are the results that we're looking to create. And there is also executive one-on-one -on -one coaching that we offer as, as part of the, the coaching package. We also have uh, pro programs that we run online which are more catered for individuals who want to progress in their career or in their business and who want to invest and see the value in investing in their personal development journey. And they walk into the program from different companies, from different teams, and they follow our programs. One of them is the Leadership Fast Track, who helps them develop self-leadership skills so that they can now have the emotional intelligence, the powerful communication tool, and knowing how to build trust for themselves and others in their business or their team. Another one is for people who want to tap to the entrepreneurial world and learn how is it that they can turn their skills into a potential side business or a full-time business. So it teaches them how to go from idea to launching their business successfully, attracting their first paying clients and the mindset that goes around this as well. And our latest newborn program which we're really excited to announce it's uh, the powerful communicator program which aims to give access to the silent movers and shakers to the tools they need to be powerful communicators whether it is when they are running a keynote speech they're being a guest on a podcast they need to do their marketing videos they need to pitch themselves run effective meetings how to create this space for their message for their message to be communicated clearly so that they can have the confidence they need to create the influence and build the impact uh, as a result of this. So, yeah. So, alrighty, uh, coaching business, has it taken a challenge? As some people think it's not a necessity because you know, um, how do you convince these people? So in my experience, it's more about influencing as opposed to convincing people. And it's, it can be a slow process for some, and for some it can be very quickly. And it's about respecting where the person is at and seeing how is it that you can slowly nudge them in the right direction that is the best for them. So some people might quickly see that this is what they need and they will come to me and say, hey, this is the skill that I wanna develop, great. 
some other people aren't sure about what they need. And it's more about they come to me with symptoms. Like, I feel that my team doesn't respect me or I feel that I'm not being heard. Or when I go up on stage to deliver a keynote, I feel that people get bored and I'm very nervous and I feel that I'm not getting the results that I want. It's not moving them, it's not shaking them. Like not, the, the right decisions aren't being made. So this is when we look at what could be the reasons behind this. And then I guide them and I influence them slowly in the right direction to find what are the skill set that they need to work on and what would be the best program for them. So it's more about looking at how is it that I can guide them as opposed to convince them, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, so um, the entrepreneurs that you work with, are they basically mostly uh, overseas or in Australia? I have clients in Australia and I have clients overseas. So uh, it's, it's around the world. So I, I'm blessed to have had the opportunity to run my business online for the most part. And uh, this gives me the opportunity to connect with entrepreneurs from around the world. Okay, so um, this, is this business uh, operated just by you or do you have contractors working? With you. So yeah, I, I would I would say that I don't have a team, a full time team at the moment. I collaborate and I engage with a lot of part time and uh, freelancers who uh, who I work with as team members. But I still don't have a full time team working for the company. Awesome. Well, um, just, you know, because we are still in a pandemic, I was wondering if your business had taken a hit during the lockdown. Yes, at the beginning, uh, it, it was a, a big uh, shock and um, looking at what was the best way for us to use what we already have and do the best thing we can to pivot and uh, drive the business forward and the results that we wanted to create for last year. And um, I would say the, the challenge was, was more about to recreate the space that we used to have with teams when we were doing face-to-face -face training with team members in companies into an online space. And um, because the programs we run online anyway, but usually we find with companies and uh, team members that they are more used to the face-to-face -face environment. So having this change and shift to influence them and to bring them towards the accepting the online version of what they're used to in a face-to-face -face environment was the one that slowed us down in, in in a way we were ready like we were already ready to go online it was more about getting people to buy into the new idea and getting used to the fact that okay what we used to do face-to-face -face is now going to be fully operational online okay so they had to they are okay did they ask you for a discount because you know it's not face to face, it's online. Did you have to face anything like that? Not really. I'm really blessed to attract clients who see the value in what we do um, and who are looking for the results that we generate as opposed to how much it's going to cost. So it's not very much a ticking the box mindset. It's more about, yeah, this is the results that we want to drive. How can we make it happen and work together as a team to drive it as opposed to looking how much it's going to cost and how we can get a discount. How do your clients find you? Uh, word of mouth or your website or referrals? Yes, so we have different channels. So yes, we have a website. People contact us through our website if they land on our website. Uh, word of mouth is a big one, absolutely referrals. And uh, we're active on LinkedIn. We're active on Facebook as well. All righty. So in the past, you were traveling a lot, right, to, to give all these talks. And I guess yes. it slowed down. So, so um, how how uh, how are you taking on your overseas clients now? So for me at the moment, in terms of delivery, easy. It's still the online. Uh, it's just about transferring whatever we're doing face to face into going in the online world. In terms of connecting with people. I think podcasts are a great way to market businesses these days. And thank you again for the opportunity for having us here um, on your podcast. And um, this is where I believe it's a great way to demonstrate our expertise and to share our knowledge, to give value to people who are interested in this space. And at the same time, attract people who are a good fit for our business. All right. Okay. This might be a sensitive question, but I just wanted to ask you for Australian businesses, right? 
um, yeah. they would prefer coaches that are more inclined to their culture, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, some uh, of them how, would. I would don't. Yeah. yeah, I would. Yeah, I would imagine. How how do you how do you uh, come come across that barrier, or are your or more uh, all your Australian clients, um, you know, people like us migrants, you know? Yeah. So, to be honest with you, I haven't had this barrier. I haven't experienced this barrier, and it might be because I've heard a lot of people share this. Yes. Uh, it's uh, it's something that I, I come across a lot and that people share with me. For me, in my experience, I, I'm really grateful for this and blessed that it's been all the time people coming to me, asking to do business. Um, I really never had to break barriers or change people's mind or anything like that because I, I'm a strong believer of inbound marketing and attracting the right clients as opposed to just getting clients. And I'm very mindful of the way I choose my clients and who I choose to work with and the way as well uh, that I market our business because it's very important for me to attract the right clients so that we don't end up wasting each other's time. So I think that people will filter themselves out if they were to have this sensitivity or uh, coming from this perspective where they would want someone who's 100% from their culture. Awesome. Alrighty. Why should entrepreneurs or company engage you as their coach? Why? Well, he here's the thing. I would say the strong suit or our sweet spot lies in working with people who are really good technicians and realize that uh, it it's time for them to develop their people skills. So their hard skills are taking them as far as like this far and now they feel that they are hitting a glass ceiling and they're unable to get through, like to break that glass ceiling. And they realize that what's stopping them from getting the results that they're after and going to the next level in their career or their personal life is learning people's skills and getting access to those tools and strong structures on how is it that they can leverage this as well. So why people would want to come to work with us is mainly if they think that people don't get them because I come from a technical background and I get this. I've been that person and I've been through all these frustrations and um, I get their world. I see where they're sitting and um, they find that it's, it's very useful for them, for someone who can, who has walked the journey, who has walked the talk and can tell what it feels like to be in, in their shoes to guide them through this journey that is that can be very challenging for someone coming into this world of personal development and people skills when they're very comfortable with the things and the computer and sitting behind the screen. Okay, great. All right. Um, you know, coaching business is much um, a touted business by many entrepreneurs. So what, um, and you've already done it for five years. So what advice can you give for entrepreneurs wanting to follow in your footsteps? So starting their own business, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would say, depending on where you're at, definitely work on your mindset first. Because I would say this is the most challenging part to change. Because there are a lot of set of habits that most entrepreneurs are work with aren't aware of that are sabotaging their progress or getting the results that they are after. And if you don't know what you don't know and you can't see and you're driving with all your blind spots there, there is a higher chance of you hitting another car and making an accident. So working on the mindset will give you a strong foundation on the perspective that you need to come from and what are the habits that you want to develop so that as you walk into the entrepreneurial world from a business standpoint, you are already well equipped to face the different challenges and setbacks that are inevitable when starting your own business. So really giving a lot of importance on learning the mindset and how to develop your mindset in conjunction with the business skill set, not one or the other, both together. Okay, and that is all the time that we have for today. We have just been speaking to Carol Isa, the founder of Alephpreneur. Thank you, Carol, for joining us today.
Thank you so much, June. It was an absolute pleasure having this conversation with you. Great. Be sure to join us next week when we feature another awesome entrepreneur, both within and across the Tasman. Thanks. <laughs>